Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lessons from Rao's IS Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IS Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here, we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express newspaper. The topics which we are going to cover today are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. Now, the first question of today's discussion is based on this news article from the Hindu newspaper. Now, this article is related to the appointment of governors. The recent instances of tensions between state governments and governors in the state of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, etc. again brought the relations of governors with center and state government into limelight. Now, the article also discusses whether chief ministers should have a say in the appointment of governors in their respective states. Now, as you all know that constitutional positions are one of the key themes for your UPSC prelims examination. Like this question based on governor came in year 2019. Now, let's come to the practice question. Here, you have to find out which of the following suggested that the governor should have the right to sanction for prosecution of a state minister against the advice of the council of ministers if the cabinet decision appeared to the governor to be motivated by bias in the face of overwhelming material. Now, before answering this question, let me briefly tell you about the given commission or committees. The first one is National Commission to Review the Working of the Constitution. Now, this is also known as Justice Venkata Chalaya Commission, which was set up by a resolution of the NDA government of India led by Atal Bihari Vajpayee on 22nd February 2000 for suggesting possible amendments to the Constitution of India. The next is Puji Commission. Now, this was constituted by the government of India in year 2007 as a commission on center and state relations. It suggested many changes in the appointment and removal of governors. We can mainly summarize this into three major recommendations. The first one is the incumbent should have stayed away from active politics even at the local level for at least two years prior to his appointment. The second is the state chief minister should have a say in the governor's appointment. The third is, there should be a committee interested with the appointment of governors. Now, the third is Dinesh Goswami committee. As you all know, this is related to the electoral reforms. Now, the fourth one is Rajamanar commission. This was set up by the DMK government of Tamil Nadu in year 1969 under the chairmanship of Dr. P. V. Rajamanar and it was appointed to look into the question regarding the relationship of center and the state. Now, the correct answer of this question is option B, that is Punchi Commission. Now, the important takeaway from this question is that you should prepare important commissions and their recommendations for your prelims as well as for your mains examination. Now, the correct answer of this PYQ is option C, that is Sarkaria Commission, another important commission based on center-state relations. Now, our next question is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. This article is about the contribution of India to war efforts during First World War and Second World War. Now, as you have seen, question based on national movements is one of the recurring theme in UPSC prelims examination. Like this question based on Swadeshi movement came in year 2019. Now, let's come to the practice question. The first statement is, the Home Rule League and the Gada movement were the Indian response to the First World War. Now to find out whether this statement is right or wrong, first we should know about the First World War. This started in year 1914 and continued till year 1919. Now this was between Britain allied with France, Russia, USA, Italy and Japan against Germany, Austria, Hungary and Turkey. So, the outbreak of the First World War in 1914 gave a new lease of life to the nationalist movement which had been dormant since the heady days of Swadeshi movement. Now, the Britain difficulty was India's opportunity. So, this opportunity was seized in different ways with varying success by the Gadar revolutionary based in North America and by Lokmanya Tilak 
any basin and their home rule league. So with this, our first statement is right. Now let's come to the second statement. In the wake up of the Second World War, Congress decided to support the war effort unconditionally. Whenever you are practicing previous year question, you should always see such words carefully. So as you all know, that Second World War started in year 1939 and lasted till 1945. So the Congress did not like the unilateral action of the British of drawing India into the war without consulting the Indians. So it decided to support the war effort conditionally, not unconditionally. So the Indian offer to cooperate in the war effort with two basic conditions. The first one is after the war, a constituent assembly should be convened to determine political structure of a free India. And the second is immediately some form of a generally responsible government should be established at the center. So this offer was rejected by the Lilith Go, the Viceroy. So with this, our second statement is incorrect. It was a conditional support, not unconditional support. Now let's come to the third statement. August offer of 1940 was mainly intended to get the cooperation of India in the war effort. Now if you remember that Hitler's astounding success and the fall of Belgium, Holland and France put England in a conciliatory mood. So the British government came up with this offer to get the cooperation of India in the war effort. So the Viceroy the Lelengo announced the August offer 1940 which proposed dominion status, expansion of Viceroy's executive council, setting up a constituent assembly after the war. So with this our third statement is correct. So with this our correct answer is option C, 1 and 3 only. So as I told you, when such words are there, you should read that statement carefully. So with this, if you would have eliminated statement 2, you would have got the right answer, that is option C. Now the answer of this PYQ is option C, both 1 and 2. Now our next question is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, Iran has developed a hypersonic ballistic missile which might raise concern from the UN nuclear watchdog. Now this article is not that much relevant for your prelims examination. Now the key takeaway from this article for your prelims examination is important geographical regions and this is important as in 2015 UPSC has asked question based on Mediterranean Sea. Now let's come to the practice question. Which one of the following countries of the Middle East does not open out to the Persian Gulf? Now to answer such question, one should practice geography with the help of map. Now here, as you can see, the Persian Gulf is a shallow marginal sea of the Indian Ocean that lies between the Arabian Peninsula and southwestern Iran. It is bordered on the north, northeast and east by Iran and on the southeast and south by Oman and by the UAE, that is United Arab Emirates and on the southwest and west by Qatar, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and on the northwest by Kuwait and Iraq. Now with this you can see that Yemen is the only country which does not open out to the Persian Gulf. So with this our correct answer is option D that is Yemen and the answer of this PYQ is option B that is Jordan. Now our next question is based on this article. According to this article, Indian Space Research Organization has successfully conducted the hot test of CE-20 cryogenic engine which has been indigenously developed for launch vehicle Mark III, previously called the GSLV Mark III at Mahendragiri in Tamil Nadu. Now as you all know, space technology is one of the important theme for your UPSC prelims examination. Like this question came in year 2018 which is based on India satellite launch vehicles. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify the incorrect statements with respect to cryogenic engine. The first statement is it relies on the craft's forward motion to draw in air and on a specially shaped intact passage to compress the air for combustion. Now this statement is incorrect as it is a core feature of ramjet engine. Basically ramjet is an air breathing jet engine that operates with no major moving parts. It relies on the craft's 
forward motion to draw in air and on a specially shaped intact passage to compress the air for combustion. While a cryogenic engine or a cryogenic stage is the last stage of space launch vehicles which makes use of cryogenics. Now what is cryogenics? It is the study of the production and behavior of materials at extremely low temperatures that is below minus 150 degrees centigrade to lift and place the heavier objects in space. So with this, our first statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. Engine usually makes use of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants. Now as you know, cryogenic engine makes use of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants which liquefy at minus 183 degree and minus 253 degree centigrade respectively. So this liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen are stored in their respective tanks and from there they are pumped into turbo pump by individual booster pumps to ensure a high flow rate of propellants inside the combustion chamber. So with this our second statement is correct. So our correct answer of this question is option A, that is one only. So the answer of this PYQ is option A, that is one only. Now our next question is based on this article from the Indian Express. This article is about response by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman to queries on restoration of the old pension scheme. In that, she mentioned that the money in the national pension scheme belongs to individual contributors and as per law, state governments cannot get it back. Now as you know, Government initiatives or schemes is important for your UPSC prelims examination. Like this question based on national pension system came in year 2017. Now let's come to the practice question. With reference to national pension scheme, consider the following statements. Now here you have to find out the correct statement with respect to national pension scheme. The first one is it is available only to state and central government employees. Now this statement is incorrect. As National Pension Scheme is a government-sponsored pension scheme and was launched in January 2004 for government employees except for armed forces. However, in year 2009, it was open to all citizens of India between the age of 18 and 60. So with this, our first statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. It is administered and regulated by the Pension Fund regulatory and development authority this statement is correct as it is regulated by pension fund regulatory and development authority under ministry of finance now let's come to the third statement it is a voluntary pension scheme again this statement is correct as it is a voluntary defined contribution retirement savings scheme basically it is an attempt towards finding a sustainable solution to the problem of providing adequate retirement income to every citizen of India. So with this, our correct answer is option B, that is 2 and 3 only. Answer of this PYQ is option C. Now our next question is based on this article from the Indian Express and this article is about debt instruments. Now money market instruments or short term debt instruments issued by the government of India is important for your UPSC prelims examination. Like this question came in year 2021. Now let's come to the practice question. The first statement is equity market instruments are considered as safer than the debt market instruments. Now to answer this question one should know about what is debt instrument. Now it is essentially an asset that allows you, that means the investor, to earn a fixed interest along with getting the principal back. At the same time, these assets help the issuers, that means institutional entities, to raise capital. An example of these debt instruments are like bonds, debentures, certificate of deposits or government securities. Now let's come to the first statement. Equity market instruments are considered as safe than the debt market instrument. Now to ensure a less risk environment for the lender, debt act as a legal obligation on the issuer's end to repay the borrowed sum along with interest on a timely basis. Further, if a company goes bankrupt, they are the first ones to get paid as bank market instruments are independent of market fluctuations 
they carry significantly lower risk. So this low risk and fixed interest are the reason that different types of debt instruments are also referred as fixed income securities. On the contrary, this equity instruments does not carry such legal obligations and are subjected to market fluctuations. So with this, our first statement is incorrect as debt market instruments are more safer than equity market instruments. Now let's come to the second statement as a debt instrument bonds are more secure than debentures. Now debenture is similar to bond because in both the cases you are paid a guaranteed interest but the difference lies in security levels that is the bonds are more secure than debentures. If a company decides to issue bonds they have to mandatorily back it up with a collateral. So this requires collateral. However, when the company is issuing debentures, keeping collateral is optional. So for debentures, collateral is optional, which makes them unsecured. Furthermore, in case of liquidation, bondholders will be paid off before debentures holders. So with this, our second statement is correct as debt instrument bonds are more secure than debentures. So our correct answer of this question is option B, that is two only. Answer of this PYQ is option B, that is one and two only. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.